আনন্দ লাভ করবার জন্য ইচ্ছা হলো তখন নিজ অঙ্গ থেকে অর্থাৎ দিয়ে বাবা অংশ দিয়ে তিনি শক্তি এবং আনন্দ এবং রাধাবাণীকে তিনি প্রকাশ করলেন রাধা কৃষ্ণ একই তত্ত্ব কিন্তু রস আস্বাদনের জন্য ভগবান দুই বের হয়েছেন এই জন্য শক্তি এবং শক্তিমান একই তত্ত্ব হওয়া সত্ত্বেও অভেদ সত্ত্বেও তারা আবার ঢের রয়েছে শ্রীচন্দ্র মহাপ্রভু তিনি জগতে সর্বপ্রথম এসে রাধা মহিমা বৃন্দাবনের মহিমা এবং উন্নত উজ্জ্বল দাসের মহিমা জগতে প্রকাশ করেছেন তৎপূর্বে এইভাবে প্রকাশিত হয়নি বহু শক্তি তার আছে অনন্ত শক্তি আছে তার মধ্যে তিন শক্তি প্রধান অন্তরঙ্গ অভিরণ এবং স্বরূপ অন্তরঙ্গ অর্থাৎ স্বরূপ শক্তি বহিরঙ্গা মায়া শক্তি এবং ঘটস্থা শক্তি দিবস সচিদানন্দ কোন বিগ্রহ সচিদানন্দ অর্থাৎ ভগবানের বিগ্রহ হচ্ছেন সচিদ আনন্দ সদন সে সন্দিনী চিদন সে সম্বিদ এবং আনন্দ সে মাধিনী ভগবানের যদি আনন্দ ভিন্ন করে দেওয়া হয় লাভিনী সরুপা শক্তি যদি আলাদা করে দেওয়া হয় তাহলে ভগবান আনন্দহীন হয়ে পড়ে আনন্দময় ব্রহ্মা তিনি থাকেন না সেই রাধারানী তিনি গোবিন্দ আনন্দী রাধা গোবিন্দ মহিনী সর্বগুণ হরি কৃষ্ণ কান্ত ছিল কৃষ্ণের এক নাম মদন মোহন যে মদন পঞ্চ শরীর দ্বারা সমস্ত জীব জগৎকে মোহিত করছে সেই মদন ভগবান কৃষ্ণকে দর্শন করে তিনি অনুভূত অভিত হয়ে যাচ্ছেন এই জন্য ভগবানের এক নাম মদন মোহন শ্রী মহারাজের কাছে একবার সমর্থন করেছিলাম তিনি বলেছিলেন দেখো নরন্ত ঠাকুর বাংলা হচ্ছে কত সুন্দরভাবে তিনি এই রাধা তত্ত্ব সম্বন্ধে প্রকাশ করেছেন সেখানে বলছেন সুর এবং শাড়ি দুজনা তাদের মধ্যে কৃষ্ণ পরতত্ত্ব রাধা গুরুতত্ত্ব এই দুই তত্ত্বের মধ্যে তারা কে শ্রেষ্ঠ তারা প্রকাশ করেছেন সেখানে সুর বলছেন সুর করে আবার কৃষ্ণ মদন মোহন শাড়ি করে আমার রাধা বাবুই যতক্ষণ নহিলে শুধুই মদন আবার বলছেন যে সুখ পরে আমার কৃষ্ণের মাথায় মধুর পাখা শাড়ি পরে আমার রাধার নাম ঠিকাতে সুখ বলছেন আমার কৃষ্ণের চূড়া পাবে হেরে আর শাড়ি বলছেন রাধারানীর চরণ পাবে বলে এইভাবে নানানভাবে রাধা তত্ত্বকে প্রকাশ করেছেন সেখানে রাধারানীর মহিমা সর্বাধিক তারা বলছে রাহুল যে কৃষ্ণ গোবর্ধন ধারণ করেছে তিরিধারিতার নাম কিন্তু শাড়ি বলছেন দেখো রাধারানী পাবংশ তিনি বর্তমান থাকেন তিনি পাবংশের পাবলির দ্বারা যে গিরিরাজকে ধারণ করেছেন সেখানে রাধারানী প্রকাশিত আছেন এই জন্য তিনি করেছেন লক্ষ্যভাবে তিনি গিরিধারী হতেন না বা গিরিরাজ ধারণ করতে পারতেন আমাদের যত গুরুবর্গ আছেন বিশেষ করে গুরুপাল তিনি নিজেকে শিবাক্ষ ভারতী জড়িত দাস বাক্স ভারতী অর্থাৎ তার যে দৈত কৃষ্ণচন্দ্র তার তিনি দাস সমস্ত রস ভগবানকে 
সকলগুলি গভীর নিয়ে রাজ রাজা করেছিলেন সেখান থেকে রাজারানী যখন বার হবে তিনি যখন সেই রাজ থেকে অন্তর্ধান হয়ে যান তখন কৃষ্ণচন্দ্র শতকোটি কবিকে নিয়ে রাজ করেও তিনি সন্তোষ পেলেন না রাজা বিরোধ অনুভব করলেন যে তিনি সর্বাত্মা এই জন্য রাজিকার অন্বেষণে তিনি আবার সেখান থেকে রাজ চলে গেলেন রাজ থেকে রাজা নিয়ে খোঁজে তিনি চলে গেলেন এবং সমস্ত প্রতিকর ও কৃষ্ণ বিরোধে তারা গৃহিণী হয়ে গেলেন তারা দেখলেন কি এর মধ্যে কার সব থেকে সৌভাগ্য তাদের কিছু সৌভাগ্য মত হয়েছিল যে সমস্ত গ্রক্ষিত যে মালার উপর সেই মালা যখন চিহ্ন হয়ে যায় সুতো যখন ছিঁড়ে যায় যেমন মনি সব ছড়িয়ে যায় ঠিক তেমনি রাজারানী সেখান থেকে অন্তর্জন হওয়ার সঙ্গে সঙ্গে সমস্ত গভীর তাদের লাভ আর করতে পারেন না কৃষ্ণ সেখানে রাজারানীকে পুরো প্রকাশ করলেন আবার রাজ সন্ত সিদ্ধান করে পুনরায় রাজ করলেন এখানে সব থেকে তিনি রাজারানীকে শ্রেষ্ঠতা নিজেই ঘোষণা করেন সমস্ত শক্তি গোলা প্রকৃতি কাগজ বৈভব কায় বিভাগ সরকৃতি অন্যান্য প্রতিকারণ সমস্ত বিশ্বতত্ত্বে চৈতন্য মহাপ্রভুর সাথে তিনি সর্বত্র গদাধর রূপে ইত্যাদি তিনি জানকি রূপে তিনি সত্য ভগবান রূপে সর্বত্র তিনি বিদ্যমান আছেন তিনি কৃষ্ণচন্দ্রের সেবায় নিজেকে পূর্ণরূপে সমাপ্ত করেছেন আজ এই পর্যন্ত আমি আসি এই বলে
that is, all of his abodes, all of his associates, his mother, his father, his peacock, all of his associates, his pastimes, and his manifestations, like Lord Narayan and other manifestations and incarnations. She also manifests as the Jiva, as the Tattasta Shakti, and as Pradhan, as the complete, unmanifested material energy. As Sri Padpuri Maharaj mentioned, that Parashakti, complete power of Krishna, then manifests, although Parashakti there is no Vishuri faith, there is unlimited features and manifestations of that complete Shakti Srimati Radhika. But it's manifest in three principal ways, as the internal spiritual potency, as the marginal potency of living entity, innumerable living entity, and as this phantasmagoria. In manifesting Krishna's features, his original feature is like the sun, the sun planet, the Surya Mandala. And in manifesting his abode, his pastimes, his associates, this is like the, uh, the fulcans just around the sun. And then the sun particles are compared to the jiva and the reflected light of the sun, this uh, Pratibhimba Rashmi is the phantasmagoria of this material world. So, she in Tattva, she manifests Krishna's abode. And the same thing in Ras. As we've been hearing yesterday and today, she manifests as, in her own Sarum as Radhakund. And all of Vrindavan, by Ras as well. There's a very beautiful um, pastime poetry by Shiva Ramanath Daskoswani in his Sri Sabhavali, called Sri Radha Krishna Ojala Kushama Kiri, or Radha and Krishna's flower pastimes. There, Radha and Krishna and the gopis are arguing, who's Vrindavan is it? So Vrinda says that actually, because Krishna's chastising, that Radharani is Stealing all of his flowers. So Vrinda Devi said that actually all of Vrindavan is nothing but a reflection of Srimati Radhika. Her beautiful, restless eyes to see millions of beautiful deers with their restless eyes. And her lotus like eyes, the shape and beauty of her lotus like eyes, to see millions of beautiful lotuses. Her golden complexion is worshipped by all the golden mountains. Then, first she's saying that Vrindavan is a reflection of Radharani, and then she says actually Vrindavan is non different, is identical to Radharani. The beauty and the uh, effulgence of Vrindavan, the lotuses in Vrindavan, the chumpa flowers are identical with the complexion of Srimati Radhika. The Kunta flowers are as beautiful as the teeth of Srimati Radhika. So Krishna said, I think that by saying that Radharani is identical with Vrindavan, and she manifests Vrindavan, because I say that Vrindavan is mine, you must be trying to give Radharani to me. But how can she be mine? She's the wife of another. Unless she approaches me of her own accord, how can she be mine? But actually, you say that she's identical with Vrindavan, but this is not true. What she's done is she's stolen the beauty of my Vrindavan. In this way, Krishna is indirectly glorifying Srimati Radhika and her beauty as being the source of all beauty of Vrindavan. He said that she stole the beauty of the lotuses, the beauty of the restlessness of the eyes of the deer, and now everything else is pale and wilted, and now she's become more glorious. Just like Srimati Radhika in Gopi Geet, in glorifying Krishna, jokingly criticizes 
and that his eyes are now so beautiful and splendid because they stole in the beauty and splendor of the lotus flower deep in the midst of the pines. So, Shilaradana Kasko Swami, also in his Savavali, in his Vivakati Smanjali, he prays to Radha in this way. Yada Kavasaroham Sada Sabrina Sangha Vasad Saroju Akalochalam Madhuru Vari Sangkori Sang Sudar Sasthi Enayane Yumar Shakshadurum Vidoeva Mamala Sajani Savayuva Dasaya Sayi He prays that in my eyes got the mercy of the glimpse of Sri Radha Kund, which is full of sweet water, beautiful thousands of lotus flowers, and buzzing bees surrounded by buzzing bees. At that time, when my two eyes got that mercy, I desired to taste the nectar for service. Shilaragana Dasko Swami and Vilagas Mandali goes in and out from inner consciousness under the sun to halfway a divided sun to external consciousness where he's feeling intense separation from Radhika and Radhika and their pastimes. So in the previous verse, verse 14, he had just been uh, seeing Sri Krishna painting the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika and even putting his name on her feet, making a design out of that because his hands were trembling by touching her little feet. And his, he was desiring that Nam and Nami are one. Myself and my name are not different. So if I, if I put my name in Radharani's feet and think my name with red altar, then I will eternally remain there. So Radharani told him, you cannot paint or ball painter or neophyte painter. She saw him trembling and then he couldn't paint very nicely. Or you can imagine if Krishna is trembling, the Supreme Lord of innumerable universes, who's part of a part of a part of a part, where he's in and out of innumerable universes. If he's painting right around his feet and his heart is trembling and his hand is trembling, what beautiful art that will be. So Radharani indicated to Ravi Mandri that he doesn't know how to paint, you take the paintbrush. So Ravi Mandri, that is Raghunath Daspaswami in his uh, Mandri form, she took the, grabbed the paintbrush from Krishna and was just about to paint Radharani's feet herself when all of a sudden everything disappeared. And then she began again, he began again, rolling and wailing and weeping on the bank of Radharani. And now the vision comes of Radha And he sees, just as the devotees and Srila Gurudev described yesterday, from Sri Govinda Lilamrita and Sri Krishna Bhavanamrita, this scene is witnessed by Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. He's seeing so many thousands of lotus flowers surrounded by buzzing honey bees. And these bees are searching, he says, for honey. They're searching for Radha. So he's remembering that the gopis are telling Krishna, when Krishna went to Mathura, that the bees, and this is reminded at Radha Kund because the bees are humming around the lotus flowers at Radha Kund, that the bees become so intoxicated that they lose all their discrimination on what's a fragrant and beautiful flower and what's a not fragrant flower. So Raghunath Das Goswami, by seeing Raghunath is thinking of the gopis, remembering Krishna having gone to Mathura, that now he's lost all of his discrimination, having become maddened by tasting the nectar of Shumati Radhika and the gopis, now he's sitting on the flower of Pucha. So he's hearing the peacocks, get they come out, they come out, the peacocks and the peahens, and the gopilas and gopilis, the cuckoos, cooing, singing on the seventh note, and they're cooing, the cooing of the pigeons, sounding just like the blowing of the concha of Kamadev. And he's praying, Oh Shumati Radharani, please, oh Radha please reveal your salute to me. 
And then when the Sarumi called Radhakun is revealed, not what you see, this is just the mind. That is, we see nothing. We see some water, some uh, withered flowers. But Shalaratna Das Goswami is teaching us how to pray. Please reveal your Sarup as it is. And then when that Sarup is revealed, he has an unlimited desire to render all varieties of services to Srimati Radhika. He sees the Jalagiri Nila, the splashing pastimes of Radha and Krishna and the gopis in her kund. He sees Krishna speaking to the gopis how Radha kund is Radha Rani herself. He sees the ray of Srimati Radhika, which is just like a swarm of dancing bumblebees. And then he said, those bumblebees and Radha Kund, they are your graves. And then he sees the restless fish-like eyes of Srimati Radhika and said that all these fish in Radha Kund are not different from the eyes of Radhika. And her very sweet and soft smile which makes foam waves like, uh, which is full of foam like waves of sweetness. These are like the waves of Radha Kund, which is not waves in water, but which is the sweetness of Srimadhi Radha smile. And when the water of Krishna Kund goes over Shama Kund, goes over to the water of Radha Kund, then Krishna says, I feel like I'm embracing Srimadhi Radha. So Shilaradana Jasko Swami is teaching us how to sing and how to pray and how to read. I ask for a day one. All the services that you've given me, my chanting and praying isn't so good, it's sloppy. So he said, no, you have to take the time, just like I do, to chant and to read and pray that the uh, diamond, ruby uh, platforms of Radha Kund and all the beautiful trees with the hanging ropes and the swings and the trees are so full of big long branches that the sun can come and make it too hot for them. Seeing the peacocks and the parrots and the parrots that Sri Patpuri mentioned, Puri Maharaj mentioned, they're debating who is greater, Radha or Krishna. So we pray that the real Swarup of Sri Radhakund will manifest in our hearts and the pure desire to serve Sri Mati Radhika as a Padagasi. I and mean, we wouldn't even know anything about this, about Radhakund or about becoming Radharani's servants, if it wasn't for Radharani's maid servant, Shilagurdi. When I first met him, he said to me, You are preaching to Krishna. But, if you become main servant of Srimati Radhika, then Krishna will pursue you. <coughs> Just like Radha was nothing, Radha and Krishna and the gopis are splashing in Radha Kund, and Radha Manchu sees that Krishna has thrown so much water on Radha Rani that she's rubbing her eyes and abusing Krishna. So Radha Manchu starts splashing water at Krishna to retaliate, and all of a sudden everything disappears. The Kundi disappears, Radha Rani, the water, and everything. And then he's rolling on the ground and weeping and teaching us to read. So, Srila Gurudev is ordered us to speak on 
to you at some point. So, I will speak quite briefly and simply because I did not go into either these other devotions nor do I have the brain power. So, I will just take the reference of the devotions who have spoken yesterday and today. Sri Pat Puri Maharaj, he has started also with the verse of Maharaj Shakti, he did either Sri Pat so Bhagavad Gita and Allah prayers are that Lord has for us to start to be divided shortly, multifarious energies and of these multifarious energies then it's explained in Chaitanya Charitamita Anandam se ladini Sadam se san chidini Chidam se san vidhari gyan kori mani that these energies um, of Sri Shakti they can be um, distinguished as Ananda, Ananda, Ananda Sen Ladini, uh, the Ladini potency, the pleasure potency of the Lord. Sadam Sen Sadini, that the um, existence potency of the Lord. And Chidam Sen Sadini, Sadini Shakti, the knowledge potency. So, of the pleasure potency, then it's explained. Raha Krishna Pranagriti Ladini Shakti Asma Ekatmanava Pivu Bhim Puram Dehum Begam Chutokton That Shimakuradika, who is the um, transformation of the Ladini Shakti, that the Lord, his Ladini Shakti is said to have two features, Murt and Amurt, one with form and without form. When that Ladini Shakti is reposed within the Lord, then that Ladini Shakti, that Pradoy, um, this is Amrut. And when that Ladini Shakti is manifests the form, um, then that Ladini Shakti um, manifests the Shumash Vaidika. Radha, Krishna, Pradoy, Prakriti. That when the love of uh, Krishna is manifest, then this is Shumash Vaidika. Ekatmanava, Pinu, Vinu, Puram, Dehnam, Dehnam, Pratotam. That Radha and Krishna, that they are Eka Atma, one Atma, Api Bhuvi Puram Dehnam Vedam Pratoto. But for the purpose of Ras, for the purpose of um, their transcendental pleasure, then eternally they manifest two forms. So Srila Buddha is explained that one is that, that Krishna who is in Vansipa. And there in Vansipa, he was designed Ras, Ras. And Manifested from his left side was the most beautiful Kishori and with great, um, with great love, Rav, Anurav, then she's running towards Krishna, Davati, and she's calling. So that, who, that person who's calling Krishna, 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 with great love, while she's running towards him, she might be rising up. So, she was in Goswami. He's explained this Radha Tattva um, in a very, very interesting way, taken from Sri Brahma Samhita. He's quoted the, in his um, commentary on the 37th verse Ananda Chidmoy Rasa Pratibhavi Tadhya, Tabriya Evani Jaluka Tayakulavya, Goloka Evani Vasati Akhilata Bhutro, Govinda Matipurisha Pramamata Jami. He's explained that when there's a meeting, of Ananda and Chit, then Ananda, the Dini Shakti, the personification Srimati Radhika. And Chit, Sambhis Shakti, um, the totality deity of Chit Shakti is Krishna himself. So when there's Ananda Moya, Ananda Chit Moya Ras, when there's this um, meeting of Ras, there's Prati Bhavita here. So he's explained that Bhavita, the word Bhavita, it means to infuse, or to, to, to inspire, or to pregnate from head to toe. But, in this word, Prati Bhavi Tavir, then he uses the prefix Prati. And this Prati means that it's having a reverse um, um, action, or, or reciprocation. That he gives the example of um, Prati, Upakrita Saha, Prati Upakrita Saha. That 
Just like somebody, they want to do some welfare work. And then they open a dispensary and they're giving out some medicine. So, in the same way, Krishna, he's a Vaidhyam Paratattva. He's one. But he's manifesting praying on all different levels and he's manifesting through the body of Srimati Radhika. But though Srimati Radhika and Krishna are one, and she's manifested from him. But now, he, being the person who's manifested this frame, or this shock of frame, or this mind of frame, but now he himself, uh, he's running as a beggar, crying for this frame. So, he says, Ananda Chimari Rasapati that Krishna, that though he's Rasapaisaha, he's received Shekha, but now he's running. Um, my spiritual master, Shiloh, the Lord of the Ghostwright Maharaj, he has explained in a very, very nice pastime that once there was to be um, a meeting between Radha and Krishna. And Srimati Radhika, um, she was waiting in the Kund. And the time had passed, and she was waiting and waiting and waiting. But Krishna, he did not come. Then Lalita, she met one of the sakis of Chandravali, Sorya. And Sorya said, Oh, oh Lady do you know where Krishna is? He is in my sakis Kunj. Lalita, she went, and immediately she told Srimati Radhika. Srimati Radhika, she developed so much man, said that black cheetah, I don't want to see anything black cover my head. Cover my eyebrows, nothing black. Then, after some time, Krishna, he starts to come and he comes to Kunj of Srimati Radhika. He meets the leader there and he says, Oh, I know that Radhika, that she's, she's undergoing great pain of separation. That, but if I meet her, then definitely her separation will be. Immediately the Lita, she became so angry. She said, how dare you? You think that my contract is that she will have to cry for you? No, you will have to cry for her. And immediately she kicked him out. Krishna, he went to the banks of the Yamuna. And there he was crying and crying and crying. Then, by arrangement, Kundamasi, she came. And she said, oh, I know why you're undergoing so much um, pain. And she beckoned for Brinda Devi to come. Brinda saw Krishna in this position. And she said, I can solve your problem. But first, you have to give up your threefold deadly form. You have to give up your very beautiful black curly hair. You have to give up your pink up feather. And definitely, that which is bewitching, tantalizing, and still the hearts of the bodies, you have to give up your flute. Immediately, Krishna, he gave up. He gave up Trigandalati flute. He gave up the flute. He gave up his curly hair. Huh? And now, he manifested very beautiful form, shaved head, huh? with um, sannyas cloth. And then, Vrinda, she taught him one song. They gave him one instrument. And this song, that oh, that Radhika, that she is crying for Krishna, but now that Kamal, he's crying from grove to grove, place to place, and he's crying and crying and crying and crying huh, for Srimati Radhika. And then he went and he started to play his instrument, and he went to the grove of Srimati Radhika. There the little Vishaka. They heard this very, very beautiful song coming in a very, very sweet way into their ears. And they said, O oh, Sanyas Thakur, where did you learn this very beautiful song? Sanyas said, I learned from my Guru Gandhavike. said, Oh, so you're Sanyas Thakur, can you tell fortune? said, Yes, I can tell. said, Can you tell the fortune of Vaswami? Oh, definitely. Then they went into the inner village. And then they brought her. But now, she must ride her. Her veil was covering her head.
And then they present their hand to Sanyasi Thakur. Sanyasi Thakur said, oh, I did not touch the hand of this, of, of, of this lady. They said, why did I tell the fortune? Said, oh, I will have to read the lines of the poem. Said, oh, but as for me, she never shows her face to any Purush, to any male. He said, what do you think? Do you think that I'm some ordinary male? I'm Sanyasi. I've given up all of this. But this is not for us. Uh, because you see, that when Sanyasis are vulnerable, then we go and we dip back with the ladies. Then what happens? Accident. But Krishna, he said, Oh, I am not only Sanyasi. So then, by and by, then they lifted the veil from the face of Shumatiratika. And then lifting the veil from the face of Shumatiratika, then the two, the eyes of Radha and Krishna, they met. And Krishna, who's crying and crying and crying for love of Shumatiratika, uh, now uh, he gave up his form of Sanyasi. Uh, and then he assumed uh, the history of the leaf form, and there there's very, very sweet meeting. That Krishna, he's always, always, always crying for Srimati Radhika. And Srimati Radhika, she's Mahabhav Chintamani. That is explained in Chaitanya Charitamrita. That whatever desire that Krishna has to fulfill, that all these, uh, these desires are automatically fulfilled by Srimati Radhika. That to have to enjoy and that in our grasp to reach more and more exalted states, then it cannot reach more and more exalted states without um, um, many gopis being there. So, another one, another two more rasa prakla, kavit, sabir, yadi, yadi, patel, kalabir. That she manifests on her body, kaya uh, bhimaru. Um, um, sakis, Dalita, Vishaka, Tunda Vidya, so many Sakis, uh, to increase the exaltation of Ras. And in this way, uh, she is manifesting praying on all platforms. That the praying which is there within the May servants of Vrindavan, that this praying, this is coming from Srimati Radhika. The praying which is there within the heart of Nanda Baba, Mother Yashoda, all of those in Vaitali this praying is coming from Srimati Radhika. The praying which is there within the queens of Dwarka, within the residence of Vaikuntha, this is coming from Srimati Radhika. And for the living entities who are conditioned in this material world, then the most minute aspect, atomic aspect or molecule of that praying from the Srimati Radhika, then that manifests in this world as Shraddha, Paramatic Shraddha. Shraddha Shraddha Vishra Shraddha Sumida is joy. Krishna Bhagavan Kali Sava, Kama Krishna. In this way, Srimati Raika, she's fulfilling all the desires of Krishna, especially Prabhupada's, and she's bringing countless souls uh, into the association to serve Krishna uh, with love and affection. Thank you, Kama. So Srila Gurude has asked me to speak something briefly on Radha Tattva. Radha Tattva is so extraordinarily high, I am utterly unqualified to speak on this topic, but I will say some words that I have heard and try and repeat like a parrot some of the Tattva 
and perhaps one day by Shri Rudra's mercy I will understand something of this tattva. So it's stated very clearly that Raja Purna Shakti, Krishna Purna Shakti Man, Doe Vastu Veda Vai, Shastra Taman. That Raja, and Raja is the Shakti, Krishna Shakti Man. There is no difference, ultimately it's described. They're non-different, just as heat and fire are non-different, or musk and incent is non-different. So this is the understanding of Radha and Krishna, as we've heard this evening. Shumati Radharani manifested from Krishna's left side for Vilas, for amorous pastimes, for Krishna to experience very wonderful exchanges of rasa. So who is Radha? Gurudev is asking for Tattva. So, Devi Krishnamani Prakta Radhika Paladevata. This is who is Srimati Radhika? She is the uh, counterpart of Krishna. She is the central figure in all the Lakshmis. Sarva Lakshmi Mani Sarva Kanti Samani Para. This is who is Srimati Radhika? She is the central figure of all the goddesses of fortune. But to understand Krishna's Swarup, Swarup, Krishna's own form, we can only understand this through the activities of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He has descended at this time to give us a picture, an understanding of the glory of Sri Mati Radhika. Radha Krishna Pranaya Mrikutya Halini Shakti Asma Eka Api Kubi Dukke Goto Radha Krishna Pranaya Vikritya Hadini Shakti Asma Eka Pana Hati Bodhi Guru Eka Goto So this is describing the oneness of Radha and this is Krishna's internal potency. Radha Bhavati Subhadatam, Nomi Krishna Sodhatam. This is the nature of Radha. And furthermore, in uh, the sixth verse of Adyudila, Krishna's Kaviraj is very clearly describing the glory of Radha. Radha, uh, Shiradaya Pranaya, Mahima Kitari Shodhanaya. What is the glory of Radha? The glory of Radha is that she is, uh, Krishna is all spiritual truth and joy. But Krishna becomes mad for Radha. And Krishna is all supreme strength and power. But Radha defeats Krishna. Krishna is the supreme dancer. But Radha is his guru in dancing. So these aspects are the glories of Radha. Krishna is the repository of all contradiction and Radha also, she mirrors that contradiction. So this glory, Mahima of Radha is described in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Then Svadhyena, uh, Svadhyena Madhurima, Kidrishovanaiva. This Madhurima, Svadhyena Buddha, Madhurima, Kidrishovanaiva. So the great qualities that only Radha is aware of in Krishna um, are exemplified in the acts of Radha. Shimati Radharani, just for example as a mother, is aware of the extraordinary qualities of her child. Similarly, Krishna Radha, through her supreme love and affection for Krishna, she is aware of Krishna's great qualities. Krishna, once he saw his reflection in a mirrored column, column of jewels, and he was astonished by his own beauty, but he couldn't taste that beauty. But when Srimati Radharani manifests, then Krishna can taste this beauty. Sri Gurudev has described very simply an example. Say a man has a music shop, and he has many musical instruments, but he can't play any of those instruments. But he has a friend who can play all of those instruments. So similarly, Krishna, he is the repository of all ras, but the taste of that ras 
but only manifest when he's in the company of Shrimati Radharani. And then there is the sweetness that Radharani experiences by tasting Krishna's love, which is millions and millions of times greater than Krishna himself tastes. So Krishna, he takes the bhav and kanti, that bhav at yasamajani, sachigaro sindhu harindu. He takes the bhav and kanti of Srimati Radhika and manifests as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu just simply 5,000 years ago, 500 years ago. So this um, example shown by the life and teachings of Mahaprabhu is giving us an understanding of who is Srimati Radharani, what is her greatness, what is her sweetness, and what is her glory. So this is described in Chaitanya Charitamrita. And the happiness that she's experiencing is also exemplified when Krishna he praises the yogis, when he comes back, so he's describing here how he is so indebted to the gopis, how not even in a lifetime of Lord Brahma can he repay the gopis for their affection and their surrender to him. So in this way, Krishna, he's glorifying the gopis, and above all gopis is Srimati Radhika, as Buddhapad uh, Puri Maharaj was describing. That Radhika, she is the uh, one who Krishna left the Rasvila with and went to a secluded place. And only Radhika is that um, focus or that highest aspect of Krishna's affection. So these are just some words that I'm repeating that I've understood. Uh, I hope that one day something of this cantor will manifest in my heart and I will be able to understand this very sublime and astonishing sweet tantra. <laughs> <laughs> Together, 
without any indication, I will run towards her. But if she said, oh, no, no, but I'm just not a one, I think we will take a stick and shed after you. Because he's swimming in his radical. Shura Matis Nanta Sarazanti, when he was sitting in the radical, he was remarking, all those people, all those pilgrims which are here, they pay some attention to Shimati Radhika because she has a connection with Krishna. Actually, we do the reverse. We pay attention to Krishna because he has a connection with Radhika. Because Radhika is also Swamini. This is the Vaishishta, the speciality of our line. And he even said, if, uh, if for by chance there would be a long-lasting conflict between Radha and Krishna, and the whole Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampadaya will turn their back on Krishna and follow Radhika is presented. That is the speciality. So they are family one, but they are distant for the Ashwana. And she has the speciality of Vanya Bhava. We heard that the two groups of Gopi, one is Dakshin Bhava, with Sundesi, Shambhavali, all Krishna, I am yours. But Srimati Radhika, she is once in this Krishna, you know, in another way. She is on Vanya Bhava. In other words, she is very hard to get. We have the reflection here in this world. We see some uh, uh, young youths uh, intoxicated with a youthful pride. She is playing very proud with the boys. And when I turn the boys, I don't know how attractive to her. So this is a reflection of what's happening in the spiritual world. Pamya means instead of giving to Krishna, giving in. Then she listens to a Siksha Guru Lalita and says, Don't give in so easily. When Krishna comes, turn it back to him. Don't give, don't give in. Because he seems more attractive to Krishna. It's harder. Playing hard to get is the way to get the person that you want. So, because she has that, she wants to please Krishna. But she knows this is what pleases him most. This is him most. Therefore, she adopts this attitude. In the book of some books, for instance, when Krishna is trying to this guy that the heavenly god, goddess is trying to uh, tell Radhika that, oh, but your Krishna actually doesn't know of your love. He's a nasty fellow. This is a fact. And she wants to hear actually Radhika glorifying and expressing her love. So, in that, all kinds of tricks, he's trying to make her um, say, oh, you're right, actually, Krishna is um, not a good really lover. And she wants to let me say, yes, I know, but in fact, it comes to my mind, but what can I do? I know, it's not my pride. I know that I'm the only one to satisfy him. If I when he's coming from some other coach with the traces of enjoyment with some other lover, I chastise him, not for me, only for him, because I know he cannot be satisfied by anyone but me. So when I see that he's going somewhere else, I know he's not going to be satisfied. He's going to come in the morning full of remorse and all kinds of funny excuses like that. I know he's dissatisfied. Therefore, for him, for his sake, I'm playing like this. I know it is not my fault, it's not a question of pride, it's only my good fortune. I know I'm the only one who can please him. Therefore, I'm playing in such a way. And we can see in Srimati Radhika's dictionary, in her book, there's no other word than how to satisfy Krishna. She will go out all, she will go out any lens to satisfy him. We read, for instance, at the very end of Shikshastakam, and that's the very end also of the Shilamat Charita Vrita, so one of the last verses. Shilamat Charita she expresses that, oh, even if Krishna in front of me and show me with some other girl, that's all right, let him be happy. And this one is personified as Shri Rupa Goswami. That's why we are following in this Krishna, that's why we are in the Rupa Nuka Sampradaya, because that is his mood, sacrifice to the utmost. Shri Rama said, Shri Radhika, she is the greatest victim of Krishna's consuming potency, consuming power. Krishna has a thirst to enjoy, which is so high, and only Shri Radhika, she can fulfill that enjoyment. And in order to do that, she is taking all these different forms, as Pujapa uh, Puri Maharaj and also uh, Ashram Maharaj was saying. Without many lovers, without many contacts, grass is not flowing. And in the spiritual world, there's only one word, only one mantra. Let the grass flow for Krishna's pleasure. Let the grass flow for Krishna's pleasure. So she's taking so many forms. Uh, and among millions of gopis, the Sierra versus different types of moods, her mood stands at the highest. She's taking all those different forms, you know, in different feminine moods and gestures and Mentality is she will please Krishna in so many ways, so many ways, so many ways. Now, another point I wanted to make that also 
she wants so much to please Krishna that when she was in Vrindavan, she always wanted to be alone with Krishna. She was saying, if only I was a boy, I could always be with Krishna and please him. Now she could not fulfill this desire in Krishna Lila. But in Goranka Lila, she came out to Radha Pandit. And now, sporting as a man, male ascetic, she could accompany him everywhere for his mood, for his sake, for his pleasure. She knew he wants to enjoy his spirits of desire. Now I have to come and help him to test of desire. Therefore she came at Kadada Pandit and in a pretext of giving some Bhagavatam class in the garden of Tatagonia, what was she doing? She was expressing, she was teaching him all. This Lila, this is the way I tested it. This is my son of the Lila. Because in the Bhagavatam we hear only Krishna's side. We don't hear about the other side. Now as Kadada Pandit, she is so cold in the class of Bhagavata. Actually, she is telling him, this is the way I feel. And this is the way you can come to that feeling that you want so much to experience. You want to tell that sweetness, this is the way to do it. So she is doing it like this. Also, it is said that Krishna's karunya, his mercy, is topmost. But of all his qualities, his mercy is reigning supreme. Now, Srimati Radhika, she is expressing her mercy. I was thinking that the other day when Guru was speaking about it. Um, of uh, that she said, when Krishna expressed the desire, I will come on this earth, please come with me. She said, I cannot go if there is no Jamuna, I cannot go if there is no Govardhan. So she also brought Govardhan here. Now, Govardhan is coming from her heart, and she is a Kampanakti. She is a source of service, even the desire to serve comes from her. So in order to give us a chance to pray for service, she has come, she has brought Giriraj, and we can pray to Giriraj under Guru's guidance. Oh Giriraj, please give me the service of Srimati Radhika. So there is a place where, a plane where the natural propensity of love of the soul can have this wholesome uh, manifestation. And Srimadurde is training us and inviting us, to, inviting us to come to that plane. He said, uh, who was that devotee singing with the guitar? Uh, Thank you, Prabhupada, to approach a dear friend to the West. We know it's not always his best. Prabhupada. So, the spiritual master, Shri Gurude, is the most favorite of Srimati Radhika. And without getting the favor of the most favorite, we cannot approach her. So, we cannot be the devotee's feet of Shri Gurude that he will give us some inspiration and some love of us that one day, after his expert guidance, we can approach. This highest of God, Ayat Asiba, from कुछ भी नहीं कर सकता। 
लोग कुछ भी करते हैं उनकी इच्छा तो होती है किंतु शक्ति उसको पूर्ण कर इसलिए एक दूसरे से देखने से कृष्ण पक्तत्व है उसकी सीमा है और दूसरी तरफ शक्ति की चरण सीमा राधा जी राधा जी का प्रेम सर्वोत्तम है सर्वश्रेष्ठ है ये बात है किंतु जीवों के लिए ये प्राप्त रही है यहां तक कि राधिका जी के भाव की तो बात ही किया ललिता विशाखा इत्यादि जो शक्तियां हैं उनके भावों को भी जीव नहीं प्राप्त कर सकता क्या प्राप्त कर सकता है उनकी नित्य दासी जो की कन्या मंजरिया है उन्हीं के भाव को जीव प्राप्त कर सकता है इसी में जीव का अधिकार है और भी राज कृष्ण पतत्व है किंतु तो उनके लिए प्रबोधानंद सरस्वती क्या करते हैं देव प्राण की पतित खंड शिखंड भ्रष्टन के पीड़ित वसन ब्रज राजस्या राधिका पंचरामी पदार कृष्ण के हाथों से बलून को कुछ नीचे गिर जाता है जिनके कटाक्ष से वो घोषित हो जाते हैं कृष्ण राधा जी की हम कम रस को तक सेवा प्राप्त कृष्ण की सेवा के लिए नहीं कर रहे कृष्ण के लिए क्यों नहीं कर रहे इसका कारण भी है हमको चाहिए प्रेम यही परमाराम किंतु ये कैसे प्राप्त होगी बिना राधिका जी के कृपा के नहीं इसलिए और भी कहते हैं कृष्ण की सेवा नहीं मानते करीब लोग चर्चा कदा अवश्य विश्वान जाया तक के पुण्य भावना क्योंकि राधा जी की तो बात ही छोड़ो राधा जी की तीन कन्या कुछ के द्वार पर खड़ी होकर कृष्ण का तो कहते हैं कि लौट जाओ हमारी शक्ति का दर्शन नहीं हो और वे पहला लौट रहे बात कौन भगवान भगवत्ता की पूरा पूरा मन सर्वश्रेष्ठ सीमा सर्वशक्तिमान सर्व ऐश्वर्य और उन गोपियों की चरणों से ऐसे राधी राधी के कुंजों की छाड़ी देने वाली एक सलाह का भी हमारा विचार और भी एक बात कृष्ण को देखकर या कृष्ण के जीवन में राधा जी की कैसी दशा होती विकारों के सबसे बड़े सटीक अवस्था में ये सब स्थितियां देख पड़ती है चैतन्य महापुरी का अपने जीवन में रूप से चित्र आया है कृष्ण ने ही दिख रहा है राधा जी का ये राधा या प्रणय महिमा जो कहा गया है इसलिए इसका उद्देश्य का नहीं कहा गया कृष्ण की इच्छा पूरी नहीं बात तो ठीक है और तीन इच्छाएं भी पूरी नहीं पूरा करने के लिए आए अब तो ये क्या है राधा जी की राधा जी के प्रेम की सीमा को दिखलाने के लिए ही यदि महाप्रभु नहीं आते कृष्ण नहीं आते राधा जी का भाव दे सकते तो कृष्ण की इतनी महिमा है ये भी कोई नहीं है बात को तो कृष्ण है कौन आश्वादन कर रहा राधा जी राधा जी आश्वादन कर रहे हैं कृष्ण का तो बड़ा किसकी बात दुर्गा किसकी है कृष्ण की 
से विचार करने में जब भगवत्ता की दृष्टि से विचार करते हैं कृष्ण बने और प्रेम की जब प्रेम की दृष्टि से विचार करते हैं तो राधा बहुत दोनों की तो एक ही है दो नहीं है एक आत्मा एक आत्मा है एक आत्मा एक बस आस्वादन करने के लिए कौन आस्वादन करेगा कृष्ण आस्वादन करेगा और राधा की आस्वादन करेगा शक्तिमान भी करेंगे शक्ति भी करेंगे दोनों आस्वादन करेंगे और आस्वादन में कौन बड़ा है ये भी कहना शक्ति है राधा जी के दिग्गर में सुनते हैं राधा चिंता विवेक ने जैसे काफी विरोध उनकी काम भी नहीं विरोध कृष्ण ही कही राधा जी भी हो गए उनकी चिंता कर और राधा जी उनकी अद्भुत दशा और भी अद्भुत इसलिए दोनों एक ही है प्रशस्त साधन के लिए कृष्ण ही राधिका जी है राधिका जी इस प्रकार से काम करके दोनों की वर्णा के लिए हम प्रार्थना करते हैं आप सभी लोग आज के दिन में आप सभी लोगों का राधा और कृष्ण आप लोगों को कृपा करें कि उनके प्रेम के एक अणु अंश को भी हम समझ सकें आना तो बहुत जरूर Even though there are so many speakers who can speak so much, and even though so much has been said, there is so much more that could be said. But time is limited. The Buddha has said he is giving the answers. Therefore, if you go according to Tathagata Charm, then Sri Krishna, he is Parasatma, the absolute truth. He is Sarva Shakti Mam, the Supreme. Unlimited powers and potencies. And what is our friend? What is our priority? What is our ultimate goal? Prem is our priority. But which type of prema? The prema that Krishna has towards Simani Radhika, or the prema that Simani Radhika has towards Sri Krishna? Which is our goal? If we look in a neutral way, then we can say, Sri Radha Radharani's prema towards Krishna is much greater. If we look at this world, then we see that even though everything is going on by the desire of the Supreme Lord, still, without His potency, He cannot even turn all up and leave. Therefore, Sri Mani Radhika, she is that very potency of Sri Krishna, and it is that potency which enables Krishna to fulfill His desires. Therefore, Sri Krishna is the absolute truth. There is nothing superior to Him. He is the last limit of Bhagavan Tattva. And in the same way, Sri Mani Radhika, she is also the last limit of Shakti Tattva or Energy Tattva. <coughs> Therefore, Sri, Sri Mani Radhika's prayer is the topmost. But the prayer in the heart of Sri Mani Radhika is impossible for the Jiva. The Jiva has no qualification for that. What you speak of Sri Mani Radhika, the Jiva cannot even possess the prayer of Radhika's Kaliyuva by Sri Lavita and Sri Vesaka. Then what is available for the jiva? The jiva has the qualification to be for the servantship, servantship of Shivani Radhika, King Kariwala, and not more. Therefore, Sri Krishna is the power. Sri Krishna is the absolute truth. But seeing Shivani Radhika, what happens? They who carry the baton, skeleton musikas, skeleton musikam, they brush their teeth, they brush their nose, they brush their eyes, and they say, "Get up, get up, get up, get up." Kankaya Eva, as the Janmani Janmani said. Shivani Radhika is so influential that Sri Krishna, he puts his flute at her feet. He puts his peacock feather at the feet of Shivani Radhika. And her sidelong glance is so powerful, Yasya Kata Sasa Devuchi Tasya, 
who glances like thousands of arrows which pierce Krishna and cause him to become unconscious. Therefore, Sri Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur says, Kamaya Eva, is there any chance that in birth after birth I may be her maid servant? Therefore, we see that Sri Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur, he does not directly pray, pray to achieve the service of Sri Krishna. Why? What is the reason for this? Because we want prema. And who is the object of that prema? Only Sri Krishna is the object of that prema. We desire to perform service. Who is the enjoyer of that service? It is only Sri Krishna. But if we look, we can understand how will we achieve that prema without the mercy of Shimani Radhika. That prema is impossible to achieve. Therefore, Sri Prabhupada Pada said, Ya King Karisa Mahosa O Kalkata Vani Nityam Parasa Purusa Sisekanda Mori Therefore, when you speak of the glories of Shimani Radhika, just see the glories of Radhika's maid servants. When Krishna tries to enter into Shimani Radhika's grove, then her maid servants said, Go back, go back. There is no darshan of Shimani Radhika for you. And Krishna is falling at the feet of those maid servants. Therefore, even though he is a topmost limit of Bhagavan Tattva, still, he himself falls at the feet of the main servants of Shimani Radhika. Then what she promised to see? I would not understand what he talked about his brain. If I can take birth as one stick by which the main servants sweep the kunj of Shimani Radhika, my life is successful. Therefore, Shimani Radhika, her condition is most astonishing when she sees Krishna. What to speak of her separation from Krishna? 